Always listen to him. There's nobody else except him who should sign it. <laughs> Don't listen to someone else today. <laughs> yes? Help everyone out, bro. Salawat bar Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam. last time <coughs> if someone tells gives me the pre- complete summary of the whole lecture he will get a gift from my side come on next time no don't, don't worry but i want some summary you know how much is there in your mind what, what did i speak about the fact should it off for yeah. everyone else to join in uh, one of the points you mentioned was Uh, angels, and then we had humans, and then we had um, animals. So we were in between there. And we the combination of both. The combination of both. Yes. And? Com- and combination that, of? That, and that we have the desire to commit sin, and also we have the desire to eat, sleep, produce, home, and go away from this world, as you said, Lord. Okay. But we also have the desire to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which comes from the angel side. Which part of us is, belongs to the angel side? So, so, oh, so, 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 and the body belongs to the animal side. It has yes. got many animal instincts: <coughs> mating, making ch- children, making home, eating, drinking, and going away from this world. This is what the animals do. That we have got that side, and we have got the angel side of coming close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So, why angels? Why are they happy with getting close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? We get close to Allah. Even in the morning, Allah says, get up early in the morning. That's the time when everybody feels sleepy, you know, sleep. Even sick people, they sleep in the morning time. So that's the best part of the night to sleep, you know. And Allah says, now get up and uh, sort of wash your face and wash your arms. That means that your sleep is gone. And after that says, just two rakat prayers. Allah, what's the difference between four rakat and two rakat now? I got up, put, splashed. cold water on my face, on my arms, on my head, on my feet. So my, uh, you know, I don't need to sleep now. The sleepiness is gone. So what is the difference? Two or four, Allah says, just two rakat now. Two rakat prayers. So you see how boring it is getting up early in the morning and then praying at that time. You know, it's very tiring or it's something which, which we don't like, you know. So how do we get close to Allah? And everything which Allah has made, you know, Uh, like fasting, you have got food, you have got everything, and you want to eat a little bit, you don't eat too much, you know, especially here, the children here, they just want to have a small snack or something in the morning, and they even, they don't like that even. They go for lunch or in the afternoon, and Allah says, no, you don't eat anything till evening. You have got everything, you've got food, you have got everything, you don't eat. So that's also something, a boring sort of a thing. So how does these things, bring us close to Allah, and how are the angels, they are happy with being close to Allah? What, make, what, what, what do we think, you know? We start with the question, and then we'll move forward. It's like the angels don't have free will, they have to, they, that's the purpose that they're made for, to submit to Allah, whereas humans have free will to do so. We have got free will to do, yeah, but... Their free will is uh, gone because of their wisdom, you know, because they understand. Because their wisdom is complete, so they know the reality of the things, you know. We, when we die, our soul will come to understand who was our friend and who was not. We don't need to convince our soul to tell it that, oh, he was... Some people might be our friends in our face, you know, but in reality they might be not our friends. So the soul, when it gets separated after our death, when it separates from the body, it comes to understand who is the friend and who is the enemy. It's understand the reality of the things. Similarly is the wisdom of angels. So wisdom is complete. They don't have any hindrance in understanding that truth. So obviously they won't go towards the wrong thing. 
You come to know that the fire will burn you, you will not, never go close to. So that's the reason. It's not that they're compelled to be good or the other ones, they're not compelled to be. Allah has, uh, <coughs> you know, opened the way of wisdom to understand things. And uh, Allah says in Quran that Allah throws them into bad, uh, you know, uh, like, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ taqween. We created human being as best of our creation. Then we throw him to the worst of the worst, depths of uh, badnesses. Allah doesn't throw anyone, but when the guidance is not there, automatically person guide. So the angels, they have been guided completely. So they don't have, shaitan can't work. Allah even said for the human being, when shaitan said that I will misguide the sons of Adam, Allah gave him the permission. But he said, not my, are those who are following me properly, you won't be able to put them on the wrong track. So that was the reason of the angels that they are committing. So we have got, so this closeness to Allah. Why do the, there are certain people who don't wish to do anything good or uh, they wish to do good, they don't want to go towards sins or they, what is the reason for that? Can you imagine some reason? I know we haven't, we haven't gone through that, but I just want to, that your mind should start working, you know, that rust and that calmness should go out. Think, what, what can be the reason? Why the, why these people or the awliya, they don't do wrong things or bad things? Why? And why do they pray for such, such long people? We have known, come across the people who have been praying for the whole night. Why do they pray? Why do they don't get bored and we get bored only for the two record prayers? Is it because of the environment they've lived in, they've made the program knowledge, knowledge and, they've, and, they, and they've programmed their, their, their bodies in such a way that they're in a now in a good habit and in a good routine? Could that be possible? Yeah, that's, that can be one answer. There can be at least 500 answers. That's one of them. <coughs> what else? What can be the reason? Why? Those people don't get bored and we get bored in the, in the prayers, in the fasting and coming, coming for a lecture for, uh, for, to learn about religion. Why, why you are not getting bored and there are people at home, they get bored. Understanding. We understand. understand. You understand something. And you have tuned yourselves in a way that you like these things, you know. You tell the, oh, those who are sitting at home, oh, why are you not, oh, it's cold. Tell them we don't go to McDonald's and have something to eat or shake or something, ice cream or something. Or they'll say, oh yes, I'm ready. Let's go there, you know. So this is because we have <coughs> tuned ourselves that our inner self love these things and like these things, number one. Number two, the reality, the pleasure, the real pleasure lies in closeness to Allah. But what they have done, they have uh, you know, like their sensors to judge the pleasures in the prayers and in the fasting and in uh, getting close to Allah, those sensors which sense that there's a pleasure in it, they put dust onto that. <coughs> the dust comes with sins, the dust comes with uh, rust sort of a thing that when you don't work, you put your arm here, tight here for two months, what will happen? After two months you open your arm, you won't be able to open it, you won't be able to move your fingers because you didn't. Similarly, we don't apply our force on that side coming close to Allah, so that side gets rusty. So that things are gone. And those, Imam Sajjad says in one of his things, that Allah has made haram the pleasure of ibadah and worship on those who are sinful people. Allah has made haram. Haram means he will never be able to take pleasure. You know, if you are regularly praying, praying all the time, day and night, all the wajibat, you read Quran, you read du'as, you are doing everything perfect. You just go, for example, say by chance you eat something which is not halal, haram food, at somebody's home. You didn't know even. But if you eat it, you come back, you won't be able to get up for the morning prayers. Although <coughs> you've been getting up for the morning prayers for months and years, you won't be able to do that. You commit any other wrong thing, automatically that dust will not let you to come towards the good thing. So these are the things. So we need to uh, work over and we need to start with the lecture also with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. 
in our spheres, we need to put work on in three ways. Number one is myself. I need to clean myself and clear myself of the sins and the wrong things so that my receiver set is compatible with the signals coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, like we know English language, so we are happy with it. But if you go and you start speaking uh, English in, a, in an environment where nobody understands English, even they, they, those words of English might be the words of wisdom and which are needed required by those people, but they won't like it because they don't understand. Similarly, the word of Allah is good for only for those who have tuned themselves to receive and understand the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first portion of us, we gathering here together, first portion is to work on our own self. May tune us in a way, tune ourselves. All these things, the animals, the birds, the insects, the bacteria, and the angels, they've been tuned by the wish of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he wanted to tune them. We need to work on ourselves. This is what has been said about the Prophet, that he is the one who cleans our inner self he with, our, with his teaching. So we need to work on ourselves, <laughs> cleanse our inner self from the wrong vision, from the wrong thoughts, from the wrong actions and deeds. Actions and deeds. And one is our thoughts. Which one is more important? Which one triggers the other one? It's the mindset which triggers our action or the action trigger our mindset. Our action build up our mindset or the mindset make our act, we act. For example, a person is doing something wrong. It is because of his mindset or his mindset gets bad because of his wrong actions. How does it work? It's nothing in the books, you know. We are just discussing open discussion. Yeah, it's both ways. MashaAllah. Allah bless you. Loud salawat. You know, we do something good. Like we pray. Allah says pray five times. Five prayers every day. When we pray, that makes up our mindset. And when our mindset is made in, on that line, what our mindset will say, pray more. You know, you are praying wajib. You started with wajib only. Now your mind is saying, no, it's time. Come on, let's do the mustahab also. Let read more namaz, more salah. Let's, let me read dua. You start reading dua, and that reading of dua triggers, it's a dual action. Going like, just like we are walking up on the staircase. You know, one foot goes forward, and it helps the other foot to go, go forward. So this is a movement. And similarly, it can be the reverse also. You know, we go, do something bad, and our prayer is gone. And once our prayer is gone, then our dua is not accepted. Then our inclination toward good deeds, that goes and we start stepping down. It's forward and backward both ways. <coughs> so these are the actions we need to work on ourselves first. Man arafa nafsahu faqad arafa rabba. Those who understand themselves, they will come to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once we understand our machinery, how does it work, we can get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those, once we clear ourselves and we feel pleasure in getting close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is what we have been created for. That's, that, like a car, has been made, has been built to run on the roads. But you take it to plow the field, will it be able to do that? Yes, it will be able to do, but the one, once and for the last time. So, we have been created for something which Allah knows what He has created us for. Allah has plans for our creation. It's not that He created and we started doing something. No. Allah <coughs> created us with a plan. We not need to know that plan. Once we come to know the plan for which we have been created, then we will be able to do and perform to the best of our capabilities and the best of our qualities. That's what we need to achieve. This is the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not just that we believe in Allah so that Allah will give us Jannah and we'll go to Jannah. No, that life is a separate one. Jannah is a separate reward. 
in the worldly laws and rules and regulations. You stop on the red light and you go on the green light. But if you go on the green light or you don't stop on the red light, if you don't stop on the red light, what will happen? You will get a ticket. You will get a punishment for that. You will be liable to pay something as a fine for crossing the red light. But if you go and move on the green light, then what? You don't get a reward then. Oh, because you pass on the green light, so that's why we give you a reward. Islam says, Allah says, pass on the green light, I'll give you plus points. And stop on the red light, I'll give you plus points. You cross on the red light, then you are liable for some punishment. And that punishment is not because of Allah, that's because of our own sin. This is because of our own self. And in Dua'i command we read one small word, Zalam to Nafsi. What does that mean? We were unjust to our own <coughs> selves. <coughs> we didn't do, we were not wrong for someone, we did zulm on our own self. So like we are going to an example like our parents send us to school, we go to school, we study there. We'll be the one who will be benefiting from the school, not our parents. They might be not, not be in this world even when we graduate or when we get the degree or when we are able to earn or serve anything or because of that learning, we get the fruits of that learning. Our parents might not be there. But when we study, our parents are happy with us. Similarly, the purpose for which we have been created, when we are doing according to that purpose, what happens? Allah becomes happy with us. And when Allah becomes happy, you know, like we were moving forward and Allah was clearing the way. Now when Allah is happy, He clears the way for us. Whosoever struggle in our path, like Allah has ordered us in those paths when somebody moves, surely Allah guides them to the path which connect us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salawat bar Muhammad wa So the aim and objective of us praying and fasting and all these things, this is not the last end. This is something like tuning ourselves. <coughs> it's not that I prayed 200 rakat prayers so I performed my duty. No. It's see, let's see. Our, all our ibadat, our prayers, fasting, hajj, zakat, what we say, qurbatan, for the sake of closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't judge how many rakat I have prayed. Judge how much close I came to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I am achieving closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then everything is okay. If I am not, then we must concentrate on our prayer. Something is wrong. Something is wrong somewhere. How do we judge the closeness in our lives? With acceptance of dua. You know, if I'm doing a dua and Allah accepting us, it's not something that I sit down and dua command and then after that you say, no. Sometimes we say, oh Allah, I want this should be done. When we are in a good link with Allah, same things happen very fast, you know. Uh, Allah, I wish and Allah does that for us. That's the sign of closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although, we might be desiring something which is not in our benefit, which must be something materialistic, which in the long run might take us away from Allah. Allah will not do that for us. But usually small du'as, Allah, I want to meet that guy. I have to do, I don't have time to be in his office. You will see that guy is sometimes, oh, all of a sudden you see me, he's here. Oh my God, I was coming to see you. This is Allah does opens the way for us and help us and bless us. Signs of closeness. In prayers, in du'as, in a link with Allah, we start feeling pleasure. That pleasure means we are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In our habits, in our behavior, in our attitude, we become soft like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is soft with us. Allah is Rahman, Allah is Rahim. Blessing. There is a blessing in our self. It's not, not something that we have become like like uh, coward people that somebody is doing bad to me and I'm not doing bad in return. No, it's because I've become a mu'min.
So for God's sake, I forgive him. Mm. I said, no, he's coming to the mosque. He's a nice guy. He doesn't understand. He thinks I'm doing something bad to him. But when you don't return the bad with your bad, this is for the sake that you don't want to hurt him. You don't want him to repel him. For the sake of Allah, this means that there is a closeness for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qurbatan il Allah is this thing. This is what we need. But the main aim and objective is that closeness of Allah comes with being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One important thing that to summarize everything, our closeness to Allah is with rules and regulations of Islam should be followed. Now, in yeah, just five, ten minutes we'll finish. Salawat bar Muhammad wa Muhammad. Rules and regulations. Allah has given us brain to, to think. We, Allah has blessed us with wisdom. It's not a complete wisdom, but it's enough for us. We know what's right and what's wrong. I'm 16 now. According to rules here, I'm grown up to look after myself. In reality, it is not. We keep on learning even if we are 75 years of age or 90 years of age. Again, we are learning something. Every moment we are learning something. But, you know, Allah has given us, blessed us with wisdom. We know what's right and what's wrong. We can sit down, we can discuss things, and we can make certain rules and regulations for our living. That This way we are going to live here. We can write down some rules and regulations. Okay, we are coming like we came down in the first session. We made certain rules. Okay, these will be the parameters in which we will be moving. These will be the foresight where we will be moving. This is how we will be acting and moving forward. But although those rules were different in practical form, what we are doing today and what we will be doing after a month or a year, that might be different. But we laid down certain lines that we will be working on, on these lines. So we are able to make rules and regulations, are we not? Yes. We are. Why shall we follow the rules of Allah then? Why didn't Allah leave us on our own that you make your own rules and regulations? You have enough wisdom to understand things. Because Allah is our creator, so he knows more. He's our creator, he should give he has given us wisdom and with wisdom we can move forward. Today we make rules and regulations. Tomorrow we don't understand, we can change them. For